Sorry. I went to see her for the first time in two years. The other day. I went to London. I had to get the coach because Richard Branson won't let me take the train. So I had to get on a super packed coach to London. I took a mega bus. It was the usual. Massive delays, 10 million people trying to get on at once. It was literally the Africa Express. All these families trying to move themselves. I swear some people actually use a coach to move houses. You see people with the weirdest things. I saw someone with a lampshade. A lampshade on a coach. And this woman, she had like three kids and all these Ghana must go bags. Ghana must go. And I like to say that. Is that something you see? All right, laundry bags then. And I'm just thinking, where on earth are you going? But we got on the coach, and the journey was super long and super sweaty. And it was raining up until we left Manchester, of course. And we had one of those really <coughs> arsy coach drivers. So somebody brought some food onto the coach, some hot food, which apparently you're not allowed to do. And he kept on threatening to stop on the motorway. So he made all these announcements like, put the food away or I have to stop on the hard shoulder. And it is illegal to bring hot food onto the vehicle. And I'm just like, mate, just drive the buddy bus inspector malls. <laughs> it was really hot and sweaty and nasty. And you notice there's that really nasty coach smell? It's like a mixture of people's regrets and really bad body odour. And you know, like the food they had to eat the previous evening. And it all just sticks to you. It's so horrible. Obviously I needed to pee because I had that urine infection. But uh, the toilets weren't working. So I'm stuck on this coach for like six hours with a toilet that doesn't work, but smells like a port at a music festival, and a coach driver who thinks he's some sort of commander-in-chief about to bring down the reigning government. But we made it to London, and obviously there's traffic once we get there. We're at a standstill for about an hour. It was crazy. The whole journey down there was just crazy. The person sat next to me, they're on the phone the whole time. I still can't do that whole resting bitch face thing, you know, to stop people sitting next to you. <laughs> Tried it, it doesn't really work. <laughs> so they're on the phone the whole time, and I'm thinking, God, get me off this coach now. <coughs> and on the other hand, I'm like, God, please don't let this journey end. Because if it does, it means I'll actually have to get off and do what it is I've got to do. But we got there in one piece, thank goodness. Made my way to the house and <coughs> got on the bus and I was there. And it was strange. It was one of those really surreal experiences. You know, where everything is exactly the same, but different. So all the old shops are still there. Well, some of them were there, some of them had gone because gentrification. So the old internet cafe, the one owned by the Somali guy, that was no longer there. It was some sort of shisha place now. And I remember thinking, that's so weird. Shisha, here. It's like muggings and stabbings and stuff, but now you can go and have shisha. But that's what we live in. I would shit myself. I really would. I mean, it'd been two years since we'd even spoken. Two years since we'd even said hello to each other on the phone. I was sweating from the coach, but also from being nervous and thinking, is she going to let me in? Is she going to want to see me? Is she going to cuss me out? What's going to happen? I mean, two years is a long time in someone's life. Just think about the amount of growth that a child has from age two to four or four to six. So much can happen in that time. <coughs> Honestly, I was nervous. But I went there and I knocked on the door, well, I pressed the buzzer, and the door just opened. 
She didn't say anything, she just let me in. 